By nearly any measure, 2017 was a great year for Blue Bonnet Electric Cooperative. Blue Bonnet serves 72,000 members and provides power to more than 96,000 meters through nearly 12,000 miles of electric distribution lines in all or part of 14 counties across 3,800 square miles. With scale, you get benefits um, with suppliers, and, and we just continue to take opportunities of growth and turn it into savings for our members. We are the fifth largest co-op in Texas and the 35th largest in the nation. Stonewater development to my left is currently building under Blue Bonnet service along with five other developments in this Manor area. This year added about 600 homes with I believe about 500 remaining. We're not looking at like 20 and 30 homes, we're looking at 700 homes in this area. And that's kind of unbelievable for our little small community. 2017 was a tremendous success financially. A large part of our success was because of growth in residential meters and in commercial and industrial loads. We're seeing explosive growth across the territory and that only helps all our members. It helps spread the cost of delivering energy to them across a larger membership. The kilowatt hours in the portfolio allows us to, to take a larger portfolio to the market. Last year, we added 3,508 meters, setting a new high for meter growth, surpassing the previous record of 3,015 meters in 2016. They'll pour six slabs with a pump truck. They'll line up and do six slabs at one time. We've added 872 meters through the first quarter of 2018. We are on pace to go over 100,000 meters in early 2019. That growth will bring in good paying jobs, lots of jobs that we need in this area. Growth benefits our members in many ways. Adding residential meters increases the number of meters per mile of line and spreads the cost of operating our system across more members. We're a member owned organization and so as the growth continues to happen, it brings down rates for everyone and the profitability of the organization comes right back to you as a member. Commercial and industrial members use large amounts of energy when residential meters are using less. In addition, commercial and industrial loads typically require less investment in infrastructure than residential meters. Those different members consume power at different rates at different times, and that allows us to more efficiently use our electric system to serve them. Another key to our success was working with our wholesale power providers to keep our rates as low as possible. So the LCRA contract has the ability for us to take some of our load into the market and price it out competitively. And so what we've done over the last several years is released about just short of 20% of our load uh, with third-party suppliers. Uh, we have two suppliers providing us both very, very competitive natural gas generated power as well as uh, some wind in West Texas. Very, very competitive wind. We also made significant changes to our business processes that greatly improved our financial capacity. By looking at every aspect of our business and budget, we identified areas where we could be more efficient and reduce costs. The result? We shaved $3.37 million off our operating expenses from 2016 to 2017. That's more than a 7% decrease. Last month, our Board of Directors unanimously voted to return $3.39 million in capital credits to our members. Members will see a credit on their May electric bills. Each member's share of capital credits is based on how much electricity they use in previous years and how long they have been a member. To keep pace with the growth on the western side of our territory, we made two important moves in 2017. First, we started staging, service, construction, and contract crews out of the Bastrop West Campus. Our members saw immediate benefits. Working at the Bastrop Service Center, we're serving the communities of uh, Cedar Creek, Garfield, Bastrop. Um, we come to Weberville, Manor area. We're operating uh, two construction crews. My crew's currently on underground. The other one's building new news. We're also operating with four servicemen. 
by operating crews more efficiently and effectively. Out of our Bastrop West campus, we reduce travel time, outage durations, and service costs, which helps our bottom line and benefits every member. And especially during power restoration efforts, if we need equipment or something, we have it more readily available. Also, if we're called in for extra help, and a lot of us live there close to the Bastrop Service Center, we're able to get to the uh, service center and pick up trucks and equipment that we need. We also acquired property in Maxwell and began working on a new service center that will serve members in Hayes and Caldwell counties. We purchased this property in April of last year. Uh, we did some site work to clear the property, started working with the architect. We're currently in the design phase. Plan to start construction in September or October of this year and finish construction in the fall of 2019. This facility will enable us to better serve our members on the western side. It will also help with our recruiting strategy. Uh, we'll be able to hire employees from Buda, Kyle, San Marcos, New Braunfels, and surrounding areas. Opening up the Maxwell Service Center gives us a larger uh, pool for uh, recruiting quality employees that don't necessarily want to drive to a more distant service center. So 2017 was a great year. We saw tremendous growth and that's continued in 2018. Along with that growth comes uh, some challenges. Uh, our, our main challenge is continuing to provide the same level of service to our members that they've expected for us over the years as we continue to serve uh, the newer members who are moving into the territory and meet their needs as well. We added two temporary member service representatives on high call volume days. We also added a feature for the members who are on hold that let them know their place uh, in line in the queue so they can make the decision on whether or not they would like to stay on the line or call back. And we also worked with in the organization with other departments to see how they could adjust their workload to help out with high call volume days. On August 25th, 2017, Hurricane Harvey made landfall. It rained the whole time for the three days during the outages. And most of the time when you had a trouble call, you had to fix something. We had almost 400 outages, if I remember right. We had time to pre-plan, but we also knew that it would be an event that, would, that we had to deal with for many days. Trees down, wire down, poles broke off. It was, it was, a, it was a lot going on. Access to, to our facilities was limited without our, our track equipment and at times our, our drones and that sort of stuff, we wouldn't have been able to get some of the power back on for days. Down around Luling, um, the river was too high for us to, for the guys to be able to get in there. Um, that was our first time to attempt this. We were unsure if it would go uh, pull everything across, but it did and it was something that uh, as a co-op we're willing to do whatever it takes to get the power back on for our members. We actually split the radios in, in three different areas. So we had dispatchers, one dispatcher that was actually dispatching Brenham, one that was dispatching Giddings, and one was dispatching Red Rock. So it cut down on the radio traffic. So we were able to get the calls out to the field personnel much more efficiently. We were prepared for it. And we were paired up with contractors from the get-go and that helped out to help minimize the outage time and everything else, in my opinion. So we had just the right amount of resources that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, but then we also maintained good relationships with our contractors, so we were able to call in the number of crews that we needed and maintain a good balance of not calling in too many where we're, you know, costing our members too much, but also calling in enough to where we can get their power back on in a timely manner. Throughout 2017, we lived our foundation values with lots of volunteer activities and events. Because of our six foundation values, two of them being community and the other being love, that's basically what volunteerism is, is showing love for your community. Blue Bonnet's volunteer committee focused on helping the elderly in our communities. So we played bingo with the residents, which really went over well. We've cooked hamburgers for the residents and their families so they can come and enjoy during the day. In Giddings, we built a little gazebo for them and a little uh, garden. We've had over 7,000 hours of volunteerism. And if you, um, if you calculated that, that's actually like over three years. 
Two employees took Blue Bonnet's volunteer efforts a long way from home, give or take 3,400 miles. Kyle Casper and Jeremy Lynch were part of a team of 16 linemen from six Texas co-ops that spent two weeks in a remote part of northern Bolivia. They brought electricity for the first time to two schools, a medical clinic, and 125 families. Couple of words is just amazing. Um, getting to see how other people live uh, versus the way we do makes you appreciate a lot. To get to be a part of helping them out and getting them reliable electricity where they don't have to run a generator half the day, and it was a it was a real neat opportunity. I would say it's a golden opportunity. I mean, it's it's not not going to happen often to get this chance, and you get to meet new people and make new friends and. And even the people that couldn't speak English, they show you all the compassion in the world. And it's just, it, it makes you feel good to be able to be a part of, of a good thing. So. It's, a, it's a unique opportunity if, if, if it presents itself. I'd, I'd, I wouldn't do it tomorrow, but I'd do it again. <laughs> Unprecedented growth and a hurricane named Harvey made for an exciting 2017. 2018 is shaping up to be a year of even more growth. Looking forward, 2019 marks Blue Bonnet's 80th anniversary, proudly delivering power to you, our members. Only I would do different is maybe buy some better rain gear for her. <laughs>